en question. Please be seated. Veuillez vous asseoir. The court is now in session. Today, the chamber will hear the observation and response by other parties to the presentation of key documents related to Trump Cooperative and Krang Tachan Security Center. Mrs. G.S.E. Huang, please report the attendance of the parties and other individuals at today's proceedings. G.S.E. Huang, Mr. President, for today's proceedings, all parties to this case are present. Mr. Nunchi is present in the holding cell downstairs. Monsieur he has Nunchi waived his rights to be present in the courtroom. The waiver has been delivered to the greffier. It should also be noted that uh, Liu Sawanna, who is a, a counsel, has been requested Avocat by the Nunchi's defense team to be present in the uh, courtroom as well. Le prétoire à la demande de l'équipe de défense de Nyonche. President, thank you. Je vous remercie. The chamber now decides on the request la by Nunchi. The chamber has received a waiver from Nunchi. La chambre est en effet saisie d'une requête April 2015, which states that due to his health, that is headache, back pain, he cannot sit or concentrate for long, and in order to effectively participate in future hearings, he requires to have his right to participate in and be present at the 30th April 2015 hearing. He advises that his counsel advised him about the consequence of this waiver, that in no way it can be construed as a waiver of his rights to be tried fairly, or to challenge evidence presented or admitted to this court at any time during this trial. Having seen the medical report on Nunchi by the duty doctor for the accused at the ECCC dated 30th April 2015, who notes that today Nunchi has a chronic back pain and dizziness when he moves and recommends that the chamber shall grant him his request so that he can follow the proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs. Based on the above information and pursuant to Rule 815 of the ECCC internal rules, the chamber grants Nunchi his request to follow today's proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs as Ryan and audio visual means. The AV unit personnel are instructed to link the proceedings to the room downstairs so that he can follow the proceedings. That applies for the whole day. ทีนบะไพปีปีก่อนในประเทศไทยขนมอ๋อวอตอก็อองยมเรศในประเทศไทยทรูทรูเอของยมเรศในประเทศไทยทรูทรูเอของยมเรศในประเทศไทยทรู
Good morning, Mr. President, Your Honours. My name is Sonia Rund, Nunchi's Defence Counsel. I have the honour to present Mr. Liu Sovana, who has been a legal advisor to uh, Nunchi's Defence, and he is here now with me, and I seek a recognition from the Chamber. President, thank you, uh, Mr. Sonia Rund. And Mr. Liu Suwana, you are now recognized as a defense counsel for Nguyen Chi in case 002 for the purpose of the proceedings before this chamber. You may be seated. The chamber would like to hand the floor to to the co-prosecutors and the political lawyers for civil parties to respond to the key document presentations by the defense teams in relation to Trump Co Cooperative and the Grand Chan Security Center. Both the prosecution and the political lawyers have a combined time for half a day session. You can proceed. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honors. Good morning, Council. Um, and uh, to let you know, uh, I expect um, I, I will finish my remarks um, probably before the morning break. Uh, and uh, I've been told by the civil parties uh, lawyers they have no comments, so I expect we will um, finish well within early in terms of our allocated half day. As um, Noon Chea's counsel uh, noted in his presentation uh, the other day, uh, there were 138 documents uh, that were listed in what was the co-prosecutors Annex 8, uh, an annex of the surviving contemporaneous records from Tramcock District and Krang Tachan Security Center. The uh, English translations of those documents uh, totals uh, presently about 700 pages. Uh, and as uh, Mr. Cope also correctly noted, um, there are uh, many, there are a number of documents uh, on the case file from that annex uh, that are in the case file as one entry or one document but are in fact multiple uh, documents uh, that were copied together at some, at some point in time. Um, so the number of actual surviving records from Tramcock and Crank to Chan is probably more, substantially more than 138, probably somewhere around 300 uh, individual records. Because of that, Your Honors, um, it is quite revealing uh, that neither defense team was able to present uh, any documents helpful to their case from amongst those hundreds of surviving records uh, from this model district, this place that was recognized by Noon Chea, Kusum Pan, and the Central Committee as one of three model districts in all of Democratic Kampuchea. The Kusum Pan defense could not find even a single document to present from amongst the surviving records of Tramcock. And for the reasons I will now explain, the Tramcock records that were presented by the Noon Chea defense only serve to further evidence the systematic crimes and atrocities that took place in this model district of the Communist Party of Kampuchea. Your Honours, the first two group of documents uh, that the Noon Chea defense presented uh, were, as they described them, documents showing that some prisoners had been subjected to re-education by the communes before they were sent to Krang Tachan. And second, documents showing that the communes sought instructions or guidance from Ankar, the district, regarding what to do with perceived enemies. In our submission, these documents do not help the defense. 
ces documents n'aident pas la défense. All they serve to prove, Your Honors, is that the security, prouver, Madame Madame security apparatus through which perceived enemies of the CPK were arrested, sent to re-education offices, and subjected to interrogation, torture, and execution, was a systematic, organized process overseen by the party leaders through a hierarchical chain of command. All of the examples read by the Nunchea defense were people who ultimately ended up at Krang Tachan, a place where there was no re-education, only death, for 99% of the prisoners sent there, as we have heard in this trial. How does it help the defense? that some of these people were repeatedly persecuted and sent for re-education before ending up at Crank Second point, Your Honors, on this, almost every example that was presented by Mr. Cope in these documents were people whose alleged wrongdoing for which they were being re-educated was stealing food to eat. By stealing, we are talking about people, talking about people who were hungry, who would take a coconut from a tree, who would dig up cassava from the ground. And the documents presented by the defense show that such people sometimes were subject to re-education by their unit or the Karmi. Not sure what that re-education would be, trying to train their minds perhaps to forget about how hungry they were. But the documents also show that for those who could not forget how hungry they were and who kept looking for food to survive, their ultimate fate was Krang Tachan. It is as if the defense argument is, sorry, Mr. New Person, sorry, we could not feed you. But we tried to re-educate you. Now that has failed, you must go to Krang Tachan and die. For stealing food to eat. Your Honours, the defense described these documents as showing a picture of Champak that was not, in their words, universally brutal. Un tableau qui n'était pas universellement brutal tel que les termes qu'ils utilisaient. Et c'est le mieux qu'ils puissent faire pour montrer que le district de Tramcock n'était pas universellement brutal. Je vais vous donner deux exemples of the documents the defense presented to you on this issue of re-education and instructions from Ankar. I will give you two examples of documents presented by the defense. The first one is uh, E3 2424 at Khmer ERN 00 270 755 through 56 English ERN 00322220 and French ERN 00612219. Again, the document E3 slash 2424. Your Honours, um, this is a a document Madame from Angtasam Commune uh, sent to address to comrade elder brother of District 105, uh, comrade elder brother police of District 105, regarding a person named Kong Vet. And uh, let me read to you uh, the first a part of this document and the last part, the first paragraph, to respected brother. 
It is about the activities of the enemy named Kong Vet, which were mostly stealing. He was such a great stealer who had been educated so far by the group unit and by the collective meetings for the past three years, but he was not deterred. After he was individually educated by a hot measure, he had only confessed and said that the revolution knew it. And the last paragraph of this report states as follows. Quote, Therefore, I would like to physically send over the above three enemies, along with this enclosed report, for further interrogation in order to seek for the undercover networks of those enemies hiding in the villages and communes and to take further measures in order to achieve according to the guidelines of the party. This document was submitted again to try to show that life in Tramcock district was not universally brutal. Que la vie dans le de and for that, the defense brutal. presents to you a document recording a person who was educated by hot measures in his commune or unit. They present a document which shows that people who stole food were branded as enemies and subjected to interrogation to try to find a network of enemies. And all of this is stated to be in accordance with, quote, the guidelines of the party. Uh, Your Honors, um, we know that uh, Mr. Kung Vet uh, ended up at Prang Tachan after this report, Après ce rapport, uh, because he appears in uh, some of the notebooks um, uh, from the prison, de prison. Uh, in, de la prison. Two, in two of them, in fact. Uh, the first is in uh, one of the prisoner lists in Prang Tachan notebook E3 slash 4083, E3 slash 4083 at Khmer, Zero 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 six eight zero two six English zero zero three two three nine four nine and French zero zero seven seven eight five six. You will find he is one of the uh, appear, his name appears in the list of prisoners. Uh, his name also appears in one of the interrogation notebooks, E3 slash 4092, E3 slash 4092. Uh, at this time, I only have the English ERN for you, which is 00834828. 834828. And I can tell you, uh, in those notes, the interrogator records that Mr. Kung that stole potatoes five times, coconuts three times, and corn twice. Uh, my second example uh, document uh, that was presented by the defense during uh, this uh, part of the presentation that I will comment on uh, is one of the examples of uh, party officials behaving uh, quote unquote cautiously. Those were the words of Noon Chea's counsel. And as an example of that, he presented document E3 slash 2453, E3 2453 at Khmer ERN 00270-784-785, through 785. English ERN 00388-586, a French ERN 00611-775,
775. Uh, let me read this document to you, Your Honors, um, in its entirety. It is a 18 October uh, report from Neng Nang Commune, addressed to the district party that reads as follows. Number one, enemy situations which have appeared in the base area are as follows. Lu Eng Tri, Sus Ti, Yun Yang, and Bang Non. All four of these persons have carried out activities previously reported to the party, and we have subsequently monitored them, monitored them because they have assembled together at Tumnip Tre Tung, as was previously reported. Now today, they had another meeting, and they went to contact one another in the vicinity of Semlong Subdistrict in 106, because this land is on the border, and when they mined cattle, they meet one another. There is no grasp of what plans they have. There is no grasp of what plans they have are unknown. They get along very well with one another. My analysis, my analysis is that they have plans to smash our revolution. For example, they beat the cattle hard when they plow. At the re-education meetings, they do not listen much and they do not pay attention to their work. The activities of all four of these persons are untrustworthy about their positions. Lu Eng Tri was a pilot in aviation. Number two, Yun Yen was secretary of the War Materials Warehouse. Number three, Suus Ti was a military police chief, and four, Bang Non was a soldier, a corporal. The report concludes, may the party be informed about the four of them, and please provide us information on whatever the party decides. That is the end of the report from the commune. What was the decision of the party about these four suspicious people who got along well with another and liked to spend time together? In this same document, there is a response. On the very same day, Tassan wrote to comrade brother Kit, Quote, I have decided that these four persons should be arrested. Your Honours, this is Noon Chea's idea of behaving cautiously, arresting people just because they look suspicious and might be enemies. That was life in Trampok District. The document uh, I just mentioned uh, to you um, made reference to uh, the analysis of the commune chief that they may have plans to smash the revolution. So let me now address very briefly uh, one of the other uh, submissions uh, or issues uh, that was uh, presented uh, by Noon Chea, which was documents that show a different meaning of the word smash. And, Your Honours, uh, in every country of the world, I would imagine um, there are words that can have different meanings in different contexts. Uh, in English, saying that I'm going to kill a person means something, means ver that. Um, but the word kill can be used for other purposes. Um, I could say that uh, someone is killing my dream to become prime minister. The same is true in Khmer. 
obviously. The word smash, um, when it is used uh, to smash in reference to smashing a cooperative, smashing the revolution, has one meaning. But it has a very different meaning when we're talking about smashing a person, smashing a prisoner. When the Khmer Rouge talk about smashing prisoners and people, they are talking about executing them. The fact that the word has different meanings in other contexts doesn't change that. Another uh, category of documents that was presented that I will quickly address. Um, the Noon Chea defense uh, made uh, some presentations on documents that reference uh, hot, me hot methods of interrogation or torture. Let me make uh, two points on this, two comments. First, there is simply no basis for the defense uh, to assert that the use of torture would have been documented every time it took place. There's no evidence uh, of any such practice or any such rule. Because of that, it's, it's not probative for the defense to cite the number of times the word hot method of interrogation appears in a notebook and then uh, conclude from that that it was not common. We have to consider, in addition to the documents, obviously, the testimony of the victims in cadres to fully understand the interrogation practices at Crank de Chan. Second comment. Um, the defense in its presentation uh, overlooked uh, that references to hot and cold methods of interrogation uh, were not limited to Krang Tachan uh, documents or notebooks. It is not only in the notebooks kept by the interrogators that we see these references. In my presentation, uh, I referenced for you, I will not repeat the documents, but I referenced for you a number of documents in which commune and district officials are discussing the use of hot methods or cold methods of interrogation. That is a compelling evidence, Your Honor, that refutes the defense a position here, as it shows that the use of these interrogation methods, the use of torture, was commonly known and authorized by the party leadership in Trampok. Another um, issue that was raised by Noon Chea in discussing or in his document presentation uh, was the argument that because we don't have color originals, we can't verify Petsch Chim's testimony about red ink being used when uh, instructions were given to smash prisoners. Let me point out here uh, that Petsch Chim was speaking about the practice of his sector secretary, Saum, who was sector, sector secretary until the end of 76 or the start of 1977. And as your honors are aware, uh, the surviving documents from Krang to Chan and from Tramcock, of course, uh, are only a sample or portion of the documents from that district and from that security office. And they are mostly the documents from 1977 and the first part of 1978. To my knowledge, there are no documents from 1975. There are a few records from 1976. But the bulk of the documents that were found, that were fortunately found and survived, um, related to the period after Sector Secretary Saum was, uh, uh, was Sector Chief. Um, so 
the issue raised by Mr. Kobe, in other words, is, is an academic le, le one de, um, because we don't have um, records, uh, we don't have any surviving examples from the period that Tassam was sector chief in which he was using the practice described by Petsch Chim to mark uh, red X's next to the names of prisoners. And let's, let us not forget why it is that we don't have a set of all the records from Tramcock, Crank to Chad, uh, and other locations of Democratic Kampuchea. It is because the Khmer Rouge, before fleeing into the mountains, systematically tried to burn and destroy all the records, the records that documented the atrocities they committed while they were in power. I turn now uh, to the issue of documents that are alleged forgeries. Des documents qui seraient des faux. Your Honors, let me first start by Madame saying um, that having, in my view, de uh, failed uh, to present any substantive documents moi, that are in any way helpful to the defense, de they then turned to doing something de that really they were not supposed to do in this hearing. The, uh, issues, uh, this is an issue relating to admissibility. Fait. Um, we were instructed not to deal with that. We had hearings two years ago uh, at which the admissibility of these documents was debated and decided. Uh, so these arguments come a little late. Nonetheless, they were made. Um, he is making this allegation and uh, I will respond. Mr. Coppe pointed to a document that had two sets of handwriting in it and wants to jump to the conclusion that therefore this must be a forgery. We have heard a testimony, Your Honors, that Madame the district, juges, commune, and prison officials sometimes were not highly literate people. Moreover, like any people who have leadership roles, they have assistants who would write documents for them that they would then sign. So if there are two different sets of handwriting in a document, and there are many documents like this, it only means that two people were involved in preparing that document that one person, an assistant, wrote it, rapport, uh, and the uh, uh, district, if it was coming from the prison chief, si the district leader, the common chief, prison, signed exemple, it. Un document de ce chef, et puis les the fact there are two sets of handwritings in a document in no way, in no way, means it's a forgery. Another argument or another document uh, that was uh, the defense suggests is a forgery uh, is one page Toujours out of E3 slash 4145. E3 slash 4145. And it is the Khmer page 00068. Seven three six. Um, Mr. President, uh, I have um, uh, a slide of that Monsieur document. Uh, with your leave, I'd like to show that on the screen uh, at this time while I comment on it. Honorable President, you may proceed. Le Président, je vous en prie. Uh, thank you. Uh, if we can show uh, Merci, the first, uh, first slide uh, on the screen, please. Si nous pouvions faire afficher cette première page à l'écran. And in this first uh, slide, um, this here you see the entire uh, page. page. 
the entire document, um, which is has a long name, uh, but the first le, part of it is prénom, names of prisoners at M105. Uh, it is a handwritten list. Liste now, uh, there were two points put forward by Council Coppe here. One is uh, this must be a forgery because it uses M105. Uh, as your honors are well aware, M is short for Munti in Khmer, which means office. So this is just someone using a shorthand term for office 105, uh, a shorthand reference to an office that was commonly called uh, the Education Office 105, Re-Education Office 105. There, there is nothing in the fact that someone wrote Munti 105, that means this document is a forgery. Um, another general comment about this assertion. Um, at the same time, uh, council suggests that this handwritten prisoner list uh, is a forgery. He acknowledges that another document within E3-4145, which is a typed version of almost the same list, is a genuine document. And I cannot help but question and wonder why would someone go to the trouble of forging this handwritten document when Council is acknowledging that the, there is a type record that has the same information that is legitimate. None of this makes any sense. It is, where I come from, something we would call a crazy conspiracy theory. And let me specifically show you um, why that is. The second argument that Council made as to why this document must be a forgery was that it contains incorrect biographical information for Mia Soka's relatives. His mother, uh, Hun Kim Seng, who I believe in this one is referred to as uh, Hun, uh, Hun Na, her alias Na, uh, and his sister Mia Surat, who is referred to here as Mia Surat. So if we can go back to the slide again, please. I want to focus you on uh, the part of the document that Mr. Cope says contains incorrect biographical information about these two, and that therefore this must be a forgery. Uh, can we put uh, the second slide on the screen? So in this slide, Your Honors, uh, I've zoomed, we've zoomed in on uh, the part of the document that has the biographical information of the prisoners. Um, the mother, Hun Na, and the sister, Mias Rat, are the third and fourth persons on the list. Uh, if we could uh, go back to the document again, please. And when you look at that, uh, Mr. Cope has made this assertion without checking the Khmer original. The problem seems to be in how the document was translated in English. Because when you look at the actual document, the information that is next to the names of these two people is exactly correct. For Hun Na, there is nothing listed. There is just lines in the original. For Mias Rat, uh, it, what is listed is Shrai Kru Village, Chiang Thorn Commune. Now, in interpreting that document, uh, a translator filled in information for Hun Na that is actually blank in this document. And based on that, Mr. Cope has jumped to the conclusion that this is a forgery. I take you through this to show you why this is a crazy conspiracy theory. Because when you check, when you look at it, there is nothing to this. Let me look at um, one more uh, group of documents. 
uh, in which uh, council has suggested there may be forgeries. Uh, this is uh, handwritings, some of the notes written by uh, former district chief uh, Hassan who came to this court. And if I could put on uh, the screen now, uh, I have a slide in which uh, I've put together four uh, four of the notes written uh, by Tassan, identified uh, as uh, Tassan documents. If you bear with me for a moment. <laughs> and if you look at the screen, these are four documents, Comme vous le voyez à il uh, all de of which bear the name San. Tous la signature de San. I can tell you, one le of these documents San. is one that Mr. Cope Et parmi ces documents suggests is a forgery. Des qui, one Cope or Paré two of them have been admitted by San to be San a uh, his writing. And another one wasn't sh shown to him. I challenge you to figure out which one is the forgery. They all look le the same. Me dire quel, de ce and if est we un could faux. go back um, uh, to this Il document again on the screen. Que ce soit à nouveau, vous plaît. There's one other thing I want to draw to your attention. Votre uh, sur un one thing, uh, unique kind of habit that Hassan had was using uh, uh, an exclamation point in his, uh, uh, when he was addressing people in the start of his notes. You don't see this very often. You will see it quite frequently in Tassan's handwritten notes. Uh, Your Honours, um, Madame et Messieurs les juges, I, I, I am at a loss to explain why it is council thinks that there are legitimate, authentic documents written by Tassan in these records, but that someone has gone to the trouble to forge it. And in fact, Tassan said nothing to that kind. If you go back to his testimony, he didn't say there were forgeries. He simply said with some documents, it doesn't look like my handwriting. As I've already explained, it would be expected that some of the uh, documents issued from him as district chief would have been written out by assistance for him. Lui, en tant que chef de district, uh, would he remember that handwriting 30 years later? Probably après, not. Probable uh, pas to suggest that these are forgeries, uh, there is no basis for that. Avis, these documents have been admitted, and we are well past the point in time uh, to be following down these conspiracy theories. The um, last document that was addressed by council in this group uh, was E3-4083. E3-4083. Your Honours, this is a uh, one of the Krang Tchang notebooks. And it is a notebook that contains um, prisoner lists rather than interrogation notes. Um, honestly, I did not understand uh, any of the arguments as to why this was a forgery. Uh, I do note uh, Mr. Cope made the point uh, that there is a Mr. reference Copé in there to a prisoner uh, being executed ici, on the 8th of January 1979. Now, I don't know, I can't sit here today and tell you uh, whether that was a, uh, an error si uh, or uh, whether uh, Krang Tachan, as a remote si prison, uh, hadn't gotten word that it was time to flee entendu. and that there were, in fact, people there on the 8th of January, 1979. I would submit to you it is far more reasonable conclusion uh, that perhaps, uh, as was the case at S21, 
Word was late getting to Krang to Chan that it was time to head for the mountains. You will remember, and this may well be, by the way, why there are some surviving records at Krang to Chan. You will remember that the reason there are surviving records at S21 is because Doik did not get the word early that it was Doik time to go, and, ta and he did not have time to destroy the fuir, records before he fled. So, to suggest that because there is a reference here to the 8th of January 1979, that means that someone has gone to the immense trouble to create a forgery, I would suggest is simply unreasonable and baseless. What, what that reference does mean is that someone may the, the, there were still people at this prison on the 8th of January, 1979. And thank God that all the records were not destroyed. Les archives pas tout été this issue, this challenge, this belated challenge to the authenticity of these, of these records, Your Honours, um, We've already juges. argued this. Let me just say uh, the evidence débat. that we've heard over the last few months uh, has, beyond any doubt, confirmed the reliability, the accuracy, the authenticity of this record. Um, we've gone to pain, uh, to trouble during our examination of witnesses to try to show to you uh, how the witnesses' testimony are corroborated and supported by these documents. Sometimes it can be a little tedious to take you through these documents, uh, but we did that for, for, for an important reason, uh, uh, which is to show uh, that these documents are in fact reliable and authentic, uh, that they, uh, uh, when prisoners have come here and talked about Les relatives, Miyasoka. We have found proches, references exemple, to those people Soka. in these books. Nous avons vu des mentions de ces personnes when dans names ces come up of people who were commune chiefs, de these chef documents de correspond to that. Ces we see the people également. who are in the records, the chiefs of communes and the chiefs of district, correspond commune, to exactly the people who were identified by the witnesses. We also from time to time, I, I like to show what I call interconnections between the documents. That people who are referenced in a report from a commune, we then see that same person's name in a prisoner list or an interrogation notebook. And uh, I don't enjoy having to revanche, put together ERNs in three languages de and spend time reading that. I look forward to the day where I no, no longer have to read ERNs in three languages. Uh, the reason I go through that tedious process is to demonstrate exactly that these documents are authentic, they are reliable. They are the only, I would remind you, surviving records from any district in Democratic Kampuchea. They show us what life was like there at the base level. Unlike the documents in Phnom Penh that show what, what went on at S21, these documents show what life was actually like for, mo for normal people, base people, new people who found themselves in this district. A couple of uh, additional subjects raised by the defense in its presentation that I will quickly cover. The defense presented a group of documents uh, that they characterized as guidelines from the party on unacceptable behavior. And uh, one of the ones I will comment on is E3216. E3216. Uh, these are the standing e committee minutes uh, for the 24th of August 1975. And when Mr. Cope presented this document to you, he read an excerpt uh, that uh, 
uh, talked about, the, the excerpt he read, I quote, we prefer to talk about the overwhelming majority of base and new people are good. What he left out was bonne. the sentence before that, Mais il y avait une phrase avant which states, cela. Things are okay with the base people, Tout va bien avec le but be vigilant base, against no good elements among the new people taking advantage of things, because these contemptibles de would not stay with us even if we were to give them sufficiency, two cans of rice a day. He also didn't mention that a couple paragraphs before the standing committee minutes say that every type of horrible element exists among the hundreds of thousands of new people. And he didn't mention that in the list of measures of the standing committee, number two reads, Use a mix of old and modern weapons, especially spikes to place along the border. Make a plan on how many spikes to be used in one month. All kinds of spikes must be used. Those at the height of a person's foot, sole, instep, and shin, up to the stomach. Now, neither the, the reference that council made, uh, nor the ones I've made, uh, directly relate to Tramcock District. Uh, I'm responding simply because this has been presented to you uh, as an example of the party establishing guidelines on acceptable or unacceptable behavior. And if you're going to look at this document, uh, uh, I think it is highly revealing about what the standing committee considered to be acceptable. Ce qui pour le comité permanent était ou non acceptable. And uh, finally, Your Honors, um, let me comment. Enfin, Madame et Messieurs on, les juges, j'aimerais faire quelques commentaires. Uh, the last part of the presentation. Par rapport à la dernière partie uh, de la présentation. Nunchea presented uh, a number of documents to this chamber. La défense de Nunchea. Um, documents or video on the subject of treatment of the Khmer Krom and Buddhists, actually a couple of, on each subject. And in doing so, uh, I remark that he made use of Khmer Rouge party propaganda. He used a broadcast uh, by the Khmer Rouge radio, which described one of those highly orchestrated trips taken by foreign visitors, uh, where there was a staged meeting with what was supposedly a group of Khmer Krom refugees. And he showed you a DK propaganda film in which you see Pol Pot, Nunchea, and others at a pagoda. Let me say simply this, Your Honors. Mr. Cope asks, asked you to put aside conventional wisdom, to put aside the popular narrative of what happened in democratic Kampuchea, and to come with open minds. But then, what he tried to feed to us is regurgitated Khmer Rouge propaganda. I would submit, Your Honors, that was what Mr. Cope really asks all of us to put aside is common sense, logic, and reason. That is something, of course, that no one can do. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to comment uh, on the defense documents. Uh, that ends my uh, remarks. Thank you. I give the floor to the lead co-lawyer. Je donne à présent la parole au co-avocat principal. Vous avez la parole. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Comme Dale Lassac vous a indiqué en début d'audience, nous n'avons pas de commentaires sur les documents présentés par la défense de Nunchea. On the documents presented by the Nunchea defense. Le Chenet Angimbert. 
Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honor. Good Gobe. morning, Council. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Um, Madame et Monsieur les juges, bonjour. Start Maître, first bonjour. with our objections um, to the prosecution's uh, document presentation. We have objections to most documents uh, they presented. So it seemed to us that the most logical way to structure our comments was to follow uh, the prosecution's thematic breakdown and document um, The first theme that the prosecution explored was the conditions in the Premier thème abordé par l'accusation, il s'agissait des conditions document de, de, dans les which we are objecting to was a, a secondary source Ben Keenan's book The Pol Pot Regime document de number E3/1513 document E3/1593 and in addition to Ben Keenan's book the prosecution Outre also focused heavily on two other uh, secondary sources namely Henri Locard's report sur deux autres sources uh, secondaires called Tram Tout le rapport de Henri Locard intitulé that is uh, document D313-1.2.16 and Meng 3 E's book, ensuite, The Chain of Terror, document number E3-1220. Therefore, uh, Mr. President, some of my comments at this stage are general comments applying also to those books. Uh, although uh, later I will separately address uh, these books as well. Um, a review of the prosecution's witness lists uh, for this trial shows that only Henri si Locard appears on its primary list of requested procès, expert, experts and witnesses. Ben Keenan appears only as, uh, on the reserve list, while Meng Tri does not appear at all. And at this stage, uh, none of the three um, have been scheduled to testify. During its uh, document presentation, the prosecution de devoted a signif document, significant amount of its limited time to detailing the conclusions of each of these three authors. Les conclusions de par um, and this de ces trois uh, signals the apparent importance of the author's documents to the prosecution's case. Bien que pour and given that importance, our first objection is that these important. documents cannot, re re cannot be relied upon as Petite evidence in any significant way. Unless uh, Keenan, Lokar, and Ia appear in court to explain their methodology, to enable us to test the strength of their conclusions and to learn more about their views, particularly in the case of Keenan, who we believe to be a biased Marxist scholar. Uh, strongly supporting the Vietnamese cause, I might add. Unless, unless they do so, these documents should be regarded as unreliable and with very low probative value. Nous pensons que leurs documents ne sont pas fiables. It is well known that Ben Keenan is unwilling to testify in these proceedings, and therefore we should be particularly cautious at this point to give much weight to his views, if at all. And as such, I will not go through all of the various passages that the prosecution highlighted. However, Mr. President, I will give one example which highlights the need to further investigate si Keenan's methodology. And that is the passage cited in which Keenan claims that, and I quote, malnutrition took a heavy toll in 1977-78, unquote, in the southwest zone. That is ERN English 0067-8719, Maya 0063-8012, and French 0063-9022. Three. 
Um, Kiernan states Kiernan that this conclusion is based on what appears to be very, and I quote, partial statistics, unquote, but mostly just anecdotal accounts of people from the area. It seems clear that Kiernan does not give sufficient weight or any weight to the impact of the long raging civil war uh, prior to the DK period. However, the civil uh, war's devastation was very well documented including in refugee reports and eight agency reports which Keenan knew about. In fact, in another part of the book, Keenan quotes at length from a U.S. aid report on the conditions in Cambodia just before the evacuation of Phnom Penh. And, and as Keenan notes, U.S. aid said that, and I quote, uh, when U.S. rice aid stopped in April 75, Cambodia was on the brink of starvation, and that if ever a country needed to beat its swords into plowshares in a race to save itself from hunger, it is Cambodia. That is English year ends and French 006-38793. Mr. President, before moving to my next uh, document, Monsieur I just want to note that the prosecution also relies on uh, Ben Keenan's book in order to highlight the treatment of the Khmer Krom, which, is, uh, which was the press prosecution Krom. document presentation's si. second uh, thematic focus. Now, as I have already discussed this matter in, uh, in prior hearings, um, I will not belabor the point here again, but I would like to reiterate once again that we strenuously object to the prosecution's attempt uh, to wedge uh, the Khmer Krom's experience in the DK into the scope of case 002-02 as that of a uh, de facto targeted group despite the fact that it chose not to request it to be charged as such uh, in the closing order. And um, we look very much forward, Mr. President, to receiving the Chamber's decision on this critical issue as soon as possible. Uh, following on from Ben Keenan's book, the prosecution proceeded to present a series of additional documents focusing on the treatment of Khmer Krom and Vietnamese in the Trumkok district. Uh, wherever those documents refer to uh, the Khmer Krom experience, our general uh, objection applies so as to avoid being repetitive, I will simply uh, list now the relevant document numbers. That is E32435, uh, 2049, 4089, 4083, 2438, 2248, and 4084. I apologize. Um, we actually did give. Ah. I have to slow down. I, I apologize. Well, we actually did give. Um, uh, copy of our presentation, so, but I will slow down. Um, Mr. President, we do have a, a number of specific objections relating to some of the documents that I just listed, uh, so I will go uh, now through uh, those documents. Uh, regarding Document E3-2107, which the prosecution described as a notebook of Krang Ta Chan, uh, we have two objections uh, to make with regard to this uh, document. Uh, first, the prosecution referred to this document in order to quote uh, the following passage regarding a person named uh, Duk Sam Hun. 
Let me quote it again, Mr. President. Um, in late 75, when Anka had the Yun go back to the country, he made demands saying he wanted to go to Vietnam too, since his wife is Yun, and he heard them say that in Vietnam they still had private occupations and still used money, but Anka did not let him go. That is English ERNs 00290204. Uh, Khmer is 00068048 and French 00655724 until 5. Now this document appears to be notes from a prisoner's interrogation and confession. And it seems that the prosecution seeks to rely on this document, not simply to identify the prisoner, but for the document's contents. So our objection is that we fail to see how this is in any way different from the way in which I sought to use a confession from S21 on Tuesday. There is uh, no difference in our view. And uh, we believe that the prosecution and also uh, possibly the trial chamber are simply trying to impose a double standard so that it can use such confessions in broader respects than other parties. And this, of course, relates to a more general legal question uh, we have already touched upon on Tuesday. And that is how potentially, uh, quote unquote, torture tainted evidence may be used in this trial. As you may know, we said that already before, we have appealed that question in respect of um, the case 002-01 judgment and will no doubt be discussing uh, it at length in appeal hearings before the Supreme Court chamber soon. Um, so I will say no more about that at this point other than to reiterate that, uh, as we said in our presentation on Tuesday, um, the prosecution characterized our argument in this regard as, and I quote, unquote, from their uh, response, appeal, appeal response, as morally bankrupt, while, as you can see, attempting to use the same kind of evidence in the same way. Um, as long as it fits their case. The second uh, document, the second objection, Mr. President, I want to make in relation to, to this same document, uh, E3-2107, is to the prosecution's characterization uh, of this document as a Krang Tachan notebook. Uh, as far as we can tell, there is nothing in this document that specifically identifies uh, this to be a document uh, from Kang Ta Chan. Um, what's to stop this document being, for instance, from Ang Ta Son or any other security center within the district? Next, uh, Mr. President, I will turn to the document which the prosecution referred to as uh, document number D157.7, which the chamber has already assigned the E3 number E3 slash 5H27. Um, our objection here is the same as our first objection regarding uh, document E3-2107. Once again, this document appears to be a record of a prisoner's interrogation and confession. And once again, the, pros the prosecution seems to be referring to it solely uh, for its content. Uh, in particular, the prosecution refers to a passage in that confession which describes how, and let me quote again, in January 1976, Ankar rounded up the Yun people and sent them back to Vietnam and how uh, the Yun came to receive those Vietnamese families at Phnom Penh, but they accepted only those of pure ethnic Yun, unquote. Once again, uh, we failed to see uh, any difference, uh, only the prosecution's double standard in this respect. 
Uh, next, Mr. President, I will give specific objections in relation to documents E3-2049 and E3-4082, uh, which, which the prosecution cited in its La section on the treatment of Vietnamese and Khmer Krom, and uh, which appear to be a uh, list of Khmer Krom families. Um, our first objection is one of form. Um, as the prosecutor explained on Monday, um, these two documents appear to be uh, two parts of a single sequential uh, list. Why is it therefore that the single list was split uh, into two documents with two different document numbers? How did that happen uh, and who was responsible for this? Um, all of these are questions uh, and more. All of these are questions which deserve critical attention before we can safely rely on this document as evidence. Therefore, our objection is here that we do not have the original uh, of this document, uh, nor of 134 other so-called Trump Cop district records. We, we need to obtain uh, the originals and we need to consider it carefully. If we cannot obtain the original documents, then only limited probative value should be assigned to it. And secondly, uh, that maybe is a proper uh, moment to, uh, to pause, Mr. President. Secondly, the prosecutor highlighted a particular annotation uh, from this document document. It was an annotation regarding a Khmer Krom woman's husband, who was apparently a lone captain, and who the document recorded as having been, and I quote, already smashed since he was first arrived. Um, ER in English 00290-0263 and Khmer 00079-1101 and French 00774256. And this will finalize our remarks uh, before the break. Our objection, uh, our objection is that it appears uh, that the prosecution's... One sentence, one sentence. Ah. I'm going too fast again. I apologize again. Ah, je vais trop vite. Toutes mes excuses. Uh, English ERNs 00290263, Khmer 0079101, and French 0074256. And this is our last remark. Um, our objection is that it appears that the prosecution uh, sought to highlight this annotation, this annotation in order to suggest that the husband was targeted as a lone soldier. However, in reality, we cannot draw any conclusions from this brief annotation as to the reason why uh, the husband was killed. It just uh, is not indicated in the document. President, uh, thank you, Council. The time is uh, convenient for a short break. We we'll take a break now and uh, return at 10.30. The court is now in recess.